Well, let's talk about healthcare in the US because the NHS in the UK is struggling at right. the moment. Right. And it's because it's, uh, it's understaffed, it's underfunded. Right. It's kind of, you know, we have nurses that are going to Australia where you can get a better wage, you know, better working conditions right. and all these things. So I think we, as a nation, it feels like we're struggling right. with the NHS probably for the first time collectively. But we sometimes don't realize how lucky we are when we look at the, the insanity of the, the US medical system. If your system is struggling, I think the answer is to fully fund it. But right now, we spend $13,000 for every man, woman, and child. Can you imagine? A family of four, $52,000 a year, average salary is, I don't know, 55,000. Astronomical sum of money. And yet, despite that huge expenditure, we have 85 million, that's about a third of our country, who are uninsured or underinsured. Now, I'll bet you that many in the audience here, because of your system, don't even know what the word underinsured is. What does I, that mean? Yeah, exactly. I have no idea. Right. So when you hear about the American system, hear this. Most people get their insurance through their employer. Yeah. Some employers are very generous, and they provide a very good benefit. Many do not. The average benefit, more or less, would be something like this. All right, Russell, you work for me. You get your wages, and we're going to give you a health care benefit. But there will be a um, $10,000 deductible. That means you have to spend $10,000 out of your own pocket before insurance kicks in. So if you got hit by a bus and it was a $100,000 bill, insurance would pay 90, but you got to pay the first 10. But if you're just sick, right? You say, oh, I'm pretty, pretty bad. I should go to the doctor. But you know what? I don't have the 200 bucks that I need to go to the doctor. You don't go to the doctor. And the result of that is that over 60,000 Americans die every single year because they don't go to a doctor when they should. Wow. Then in addition to that, all right, so you've got to figure out, you've got to pay you know, the first whatever it may be. Sometimes it's a $5,000 deductible. Sometimes it's 15000 Depends. We've got hundreds of different insurance plans. All right. Then... In addition to that, most of the plans will say, you go to the doctor, you got a co-payment. What does that mean? If the bill is 200 bucks, maybe you pay 20, maybe you pay 30 out of your own pocket. So I have talked to many doctors in my own state of Vermont and all over the country who say people come into their office and they're really, really sick. And they say, well, why didn't you come in when you first had your symptom? Answer is, I didn't have any money. I couldn't afford to pay the bill. Yeah. In America today, some 500,000 people go bankrupt because of medically related bills. In other words, you end up in the hospital, God forbid, with a serious illness. You come out with a $200,000 bill, you can't pay it. You go bankrupt. Your credit is shot because you can't pay off your medical bill. And by the way, top of all that, our life expectancy in the United States is lower, significantly lower than many other countries, despite all that we spent. So my thought is, and this is one I feel strongly about, I understand that the NHS is struggling now. Do not look to America oh, yeah. I as think an <laughs> example of how you want to go forward. Strengthen the system. And I want to say this also, while I'm here in the UK. Your country in 1948 did something that was revolutionary mm. and important for all of humanity. What the Labor government said in 48, with Nye Bevan leading it, is that health care is a human right for all people, not just the privilege. That was a step forward for all of humanity. Absolutely. <laughs> You've spoken a lot about um, the Scandinavian approach to health care, for example. Right. And they have a similar approach. The hospitals are much better. The prisons are far better because they, you know... Rates of recidivism. Yeah, 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 exactly. But again, it feels like how do you get over the hump of the tax problem in the, in the US particularly? Because it feels like as soon as you talk about, you know, help repairing healthcare or Obamacare or Medicare or whatever it may be, straight away it becomes, oh, well, you're just woke. You're just a communist. You, 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 you want my kids to all wear the same clothes. I mean, you know, it's amazing how quickly it, it turns into that argument. Well, one of the things, Russell, that I have noticed, and again, this has been an honor in my life, 
Well, thanks, same here. <laughs> in addition to being with hey. you, hey, sir. the other honor I've had in my life is going around the country. And, you know, when you speak to ordinary people and not just the people who own the media, they look at, at the world uh, a little bit differently. So when you talk about taxes, you're right. Uh, but if you talk to many of the people in Scandinavia, for example, they say, yeah, we pay a lot in taxes, but you know what? We get a lot in return. Mm. Now, in America, we have, for example, a dysfunctional child care system. Yeah. You know how much it costs? 15,000 bucks at least to send your kid to child care. All right. So if you're a family making 50 or 60,000, that's pretty impossible. Unlike the quality child care they have in many of the Scandinavian countries, Finland and elsewhere. Uh, here's something that many people don't know. All right, you tell me, you have a baby here in the UK, what happens? How much time off do you have to nurture the baby? Anybody? Nine you got nine months paid leave? Yeah. For, is that for both? No. no, no. Okay, because in Scandinavia it's a year for both, I know that. All right, you know how much it is in the United States guaranteed? Anyone know? Zero. Zero. Really? That's wow. the response I was looking for. <laughs> Yeah, unbelievable. So the truth is, and I've talked to this, you have a low income working class woman, maybe a single mom, gives birth, she's back at work in a week or two because she needs the income to take care of her family. But then how does she afford the 15,000 to look after? Of course, she doesn't, she can't. I mean, that's the stress. That is, you, thank you. I mean, that's exactly the issue. The difference between poor and rich in America, and I sure, I'm sure it's not different here, it's not that I have a big house and you're poor, you have a small house. I have a good car, you have a, a, a you know, broken down car. That's not the difference. The difference is you have got to worry every single day how you stay alive. How are you gonna pay your rent? How are you gonna eat? What happens if your car breaks down and you can't get to work? Do you know what that stress does to you? Day after day, yeah. it rips apart your body. Absolutely. And you die. Yeah. You die younger. Even if you have decent health care, you will die younger. So what the Scandinavians have done, and they, they're not, they'll be the first to tell you they're not perfect. And let's not forget, when you talk about how a society can evolve, this is Scandinavia. They used to travel the world pillaging and raping, and <laughs> now they recycle. Now that is, like in terms of journeys. So we can change. We can change. <laughs>